Okay, ready. All right, well, welcome everybody to the Homeschool Information Night uh, for 412 Church Temecula Valley, Valor Academy. Um, you know, just a little bit of insight into that is uh, this homeschool program is an extension or a ministry of the church. However, this is something that we want to welcome the community to be a part of. And so uh, as we hear from um, some other speakers tonight, we'll get more detail about how, how all that works. Um, but that really kind of is, is the basics of it, is this is something that as a church we've wanted to offer and are going into our second year of offering this homeschool program with an amazing curriculum. So uh, before we get into too much, uh, would you join me in lifting up this night in prayer? Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful um, that you have provided us a way to be able to teach our children the important education that they need that is rooted in your word. Uh, we know that there is just a lot of evil, um, darkness closing in in the public schools, um, not only in this area, but in areas throughout the country. And uh, it's a shame that that's happening. And Lord, we just ask you to um, uh, continue guiding people and pointing them to better educational alternatives. And uh, we just pray that you would continue coming against all the evil that is happening out there. And so um, we're just grateful for this opportunity that you've provided for us to be able to offer this to uh, families here in our community. And so tonight, we just ask that your spirit would be here with us and, and helping parents and families to be able to consider the information presented, to be able to make it the decision that is really going to be best for their children and their families uh, when considering their education. So, Lord, we lift it all up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, um, yeah, to start off, Valor Academy is what we call the, uh, the ministry of 412 Church in our, our homeschool program. Um, and so what we've had before uh, when we are in Murrieta, uh, or other location in Murrieta, uh, we had partnered with Classical Conversations for years, and our building was really just a host building for that program. But we had no control, we had no involvement in the day-to-day -day or how any of that program worked. And when there came a time where we realized that we needed and wanted to have more of that, um, it was around that same time that the person that was leading that program um, and uh, was kind of the liaison uh, for us in that, um, had come to know about the program uh, called Liberty Education Classical Fellowship that was founded at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. And so uh, that was founded by Dr. Austin Andrade, and he's here tonight, and in just a moment he'll be coming up to just give you more background on the creation of Liberty Ed and everything that it's about, uh, what they do up in Chino Hills. And um, I just want to let you guys know that for us, it's been an amazing gift because this curriculum and program um, that was created by them uh, is one that they decided to just give to us to be able to use and to offer our church and to offer the community um, this is not a business model. This is not um, something where we become, you know, one of many licensees. We have been the first, and as of right now, I believe the only additional campus that is offering this curriculum and this program besides Calvary Chapel Chino Hills. And so for us, it's just been an amazing blessing because it came at a time that was very much needed. Uh, and as you know, if you are a part of 412 Church, you understand um, the uh, the value that our church and uh, our leadership and particularly our senior pastor, Tim Thompson, places on uh, homeschool education and to be able to have education that is rooted in the word of God and an alternative to what is happening in the public schools all around. Um, if you follow him on our watch or know much of what he's talked about and has brought to uh, the public's attention, uh, we know that there is things happening in schools that should definitely not be happening. And, and uh, as believers, it's important for us, for one, to want to get involved, to be able to help create change 
uh, for those who are going to remain in the public school system. Um, but we also believe as a church it's important for us to have an offering for those that want to do something different and frankly want to do something that is better for their children and healthier for them spiritually and in all ways. And so having this ability now and now to be able to have a say in who's involved, um, who are the ones that are involved tutoring your children, who are the ones involved in the administration of the program, uh, what goes into it, and uh, anything that needs any kind of resolution, you know, we have a say in that because this is something that is, um, you know, directly tied to us now, not just a facility usage arrangement. And so now just being at the very tail end of the first year, we found that that's a great thing. It's been a wonderful thing. Now we're here in a temporary location where we have our church services every Sunday. And while this has not been the ideal facility or campus for homeschool groups, um, when we have our community days here on Thursdays, it, it, it's been great considering the lack of space, if you will, that we have. So on one hand, we're very blessed that Far Reach Ministries has allowed us to use this building in all the ways that we have for every single ministry that we have during the week, including uh, Liberty Ed at Valor Academy. And so when we move into our new building, uh, which will be ready, God willing, and we completely believe that it will, and are praying that it will continue to stay on track, but by the time this second year of Valor Academy starts in August, uh, that will be taking place in our new building in Temecula. So we're going to have a lot more space than we have just here in this room. It's going to open up more opportunity. We're going to be able to bring more to the table uh, because of things that we've learned in this first year. So first year has been a great success. We believe that this next year is even going to be more so of a success. It's going to continue to grow and get better every year. And we're just excited for this partnership that we have. So um, I'm going to now ask Dr. Andrade to come up and tell you a little bit more about Liberty Education. I am, I'm sitting here and just so in awe of what God is doing uh, in Liberty Ed and, and this ministry. And I was saying, what a, what a cool facility this is as we're thinking about year one wrapping up for uh, Liberty Ed here at Valor Academy. And I was reminded of of this armor that's over here on the wall. Ephesians 6 says to, to armor up and to prepare yourself for, for battle. And uh, this year has been such a blessing uh, being a part of 412 Church. Uh, and and, and we, are, we are growing in our faith and growing in, in the dents of our armor. Um, we want our armor to be dented. We want our armor to have um, some, some flaws in it because it's been attacked. It's been, it's been hit there have been dark, darts launched our way, and by God's grace and favor, um, we, continue to, we continue to move forward in ministry, and it's exciting to be a part of. Um, I wanted to just share a little bit about Liberty Ed, the history of Liberty Ed, uh, and the direction that we're continuing to go. So if we can jump to the next slide. Um, our mission is to guide students and families to rediscover truth, goodness, and beauty, viewing life and the learning process through the lens of God's word. And there are three guiding verses and guiding principles that we have for Liberty Ed. Uh, one, it's, it's focused and rooted in truth. Um, John 17, 17 says, uh, sanctify them with your word, your, your word is truth. And so everything that we do with Liberty Ed, all of our curriculum, um, all of our lessons, uh, all of our activities are rooted in the word of God. Everything is done and designed to be filtered through the biblical, a biblical worldview. So our students are learning about this year in, uh, in 412, uh, at 412 or at Valor Academy, they're learning about ancient history. And it's viewing ancient history through a biblical lens. Uh, they're not learning about ancient history through, through, from a secular perspective. They're learning about it from a biblical worldview. And by that blessing, they can then take that information, that knowledge that, that's, that's been acquired through a biblical worldview and, uh, and push back against our culture as a result of that information. Uh, we also focus on what is good. Philippians 4.8 tells us all the different things that we need to be thinking about, all the different things we need to be meditating on and praying, praying about. And that's what we do at Liberty Ed. The aim behind Liberty Ed is to focus on things that are good. Now, now we know, you guys know, uh, that, that there are many evil things that, um, that are launching arrows and are shooting, us, shooting at us to dent our armor. Um, and we're not, we're not brushing those things off and only focusing on the happy flowers and the butterflies and things like that. 
We are covering and addressing those difficult things. We want to make sure that if we're engaging with the culture, we have to be aware of what's happening within the culture. So we're not running. We're not shying away from it. We, we get to have those difficult conversations with our families. We get to have difficult conversations with even our young people. So it's really important to make sure we're doing that. And then lastly, Isaiah 52, 7 uh, talks about what is beautiful. Listen to this. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, uh, your God reigns. And, uh, and that is our aim, is to celebrate and to shout from the mountains, to shout from the rooftops that our God reigns, and to shout uh, about God's goodness. Uh, interestingly, how many of you guys got to see the, the uh, eclipse today? Anyone make that a priority? All right, so the eclipse is really awesome. And I was thinking about this even just, um, even just this morning. And I posted this on, on uh, social media. There have been many things said about the total eclipse coming today. One of the things said was that the total eclipse was bound to bring all political parties together in a state of awe at the grandeur of this scientific phenomenon. There are articles that were written saying that the eclipse was going to solve all the problems that both parties and all the, on all the sides of political uh, arguments were going to come together and there was, they were going to come together in a state of awe. But the problem with this is that it's not true. Awe, in its purest sense, does not begin with the consequences of science. It begins with the origins of God's handiwork. When a country or people do not share a baseline fear of God, there can be little to no unity. It doesn't take a total eclipse to provoke a state of awe. It simply takes humility of one's individuality under the authority of God. Awe is a daily occurrence for the believer in Christ. As homeschoolers, we get to celebrate this often. You look at the sunset, you're in awe. Hear the laughter of a child, you're in awe. Smell a rose. Touch the underside of a leaf. Taste a nectarine. Acknowledge your sin and shortcomings, surrender your life to Christ, and experience the greatest awe you could never imagine. And so our world is going to continue to give us advice as Christians, as a church, with Liberty Ed, we want to make sure that we're continuing to root our perspective on life in a biblical worldview so we can answer the world's questions. We could challenge and push back against the world. Let's go to the next slide. Here's a quick video of what you can expect. What is Classical Fellowship? Classical Fellowship is more than just a classroom. It's a Christ-centered home for families to learn and grow together. The objective here is to rediscover truth in an age of falsehoods, to rediscover goodness in a culture of evil, and to rediscover beauty in a world of comparison. Viewing life and the learning process through the lens of God's word. So that video was a uh, was was shot at Calvary Chapel, Chuna Hills. The campus is going to look much different in just a few in just a few uh, months here at Four Twelve Church, and we're excited to to have that happen. Uh, but we want to make sure that that you guys know that you guys hear and you guys see. Um, all the good that's coming from Liberty Ed. It's just such a blessing to be a part of. Let's go ahead and jump to the next slide. And I'm just going to cover a few of these elements, and then uh, I will um, invite uh, the director for this ministry, uh, this campus, Chelsea, up in just a moment. So what is Liberty Ed Classical Fellowship? Okay, so on our campus, um, we're referring to it as Liberty Ed Classical Fellowship. Here it's Liberty Ed at Valor Academy. But we are rooted in a classical education. So when you see that word classical, you'll see it often. Uh, we're going to break that, break it down of what that means practically. So first off, it's a ministry that educates through a classical model. Uh, the classical model is broken up into three triviums. There, are, there is a variety of elements that make classical classical, but it's very different from what we would see in a public education and even most private educations. The term classical is referring to uh, the idea of a trivium, which is three stages. The first stage is grammar stage. Grammar stage is pre-K all the way up to fourth grade. That grammar stage is where kids do a lot of memory work. They do a lot of practice. They do a lot of soaking information in because their brains are sponges at that age. They can soak information in um, readily. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see your grammar age uh, kid watching and listening into your conversation, and they're learning. 
they're learning a lot from you because they're studying and taking all that information in and they're memorizing it. That's the grammar stage. That's kindergarten through fourth grade. Fifth through eighth grade is called the logic stage. The logic stage is where they're taking that information that they memorized. Sometimes they memorize that information and they didn't even know what it was. They were just memorizing for the sake of memorizing. They didn't know what they were memorizing. They were just memorizing because that's what they were challenged and called to do. Well, in the logic stage, they get to take that information that they memorize and they get to synthesize it. They get to put this memory work, this memory work together for the first time and they get to discover what that actually means. The logic stage is bringing information together and it's formula formulating now opinions. The logic stage is also designed because at the junior high level between fifth and eighth grade, <laughs> students start to develop their opinions. And, uh, and for those who have junior high students, um, you're beginning to see that their opinions are spoken more and more uh, clearly and loudly. And so this age is a time for them to develop a logical mind, logical thought in order, for, in order to discover uh, a persuasive argument. It's for them to discover the truth. And then you have the, the last stage, which is 9th through 12th grade, and that's called the rhetoric stage. The rhetoric stage is where the students now have the, they have the foundation of memory work. They're able to synthesize those ideas together and draft their own opinions. And at the rhetoric stage, they're able to communicate it effectively, and they're able to teach it to others. So it's really the, the, the all-consuming process. It's a classical, timeless process of great uh, education. So this ministry is an enrichment for homeschool families focused on history from a biblical worldview, as I covered before. Everything is focused on a biblical worldview. When your kids come to Liberty Ed, they're going to hear next, next year about the Middle Ages and medieval times. And with the Middle Ages, they're going to hear about it from a biblical worldview. There isn't going to be any question. There's going to, they're, going to, they're going to leave understanding what the Bible has to say about each period in time. Um, this is an enrichment ministry. It's a supplemental ministry, and we're going to talk about that just for a moment. Uh, there are a variety of ways you can homeschool. Uh, there are, are there any brand new considering homeschooling families in here? Any brand new? Okay. Okay. A few of you guys. Okay. So uh, there are a variety of resources for you guys to consider and to use as brand new homeschooling families. And, and this is, this is a supplemental resource, uh, in that you have, you have, uh, there are, I'll just list a few options. You have a, a PSA option, which is called the private school affidavit option. As a private school, as a homeschool family, you file your own affidavit with the state of California, and then they maintain accountability with the, you maintain accountability with them with the state of California. Uh, a lot of families choose to go that route because it gives them complete control to be completely separated and isolated from the state. They have they have complete freedom. Um, other families choose to go with a, uh, go through a charter organization or a homeschool charter. A lot of families choose that option because that charter maintains the accountability. The charter organization keeps track of your attendance. It keeps track of your grades, and it helps maintain accountability in your home. Oftentimes, you have an educational specialist that, that Zooms with you or comes out to your house and helps, uh, helps you with all of your homeschooling needs. Uh, and then you, then you have um, a, a PSP, which is a private school provider where a lot of private schools, they have a PSP option or some private schools have a PSP option where then you go through them and they provide the accountability for grades and provide accountability for attendance, but they keep track of all of that information for you. Uh, Liberty Ed at Valor Academy is a supplemental program. All of those things that I listed are your responsibility, your decision to make as a parent, whether you go through a PSP, a PSA, or you have a charter school that you, that you go through. A lot of the families at Calvary Chapel Chino Hills, they have, a, they have a PSA. They file their own affidavit with the state, and a lot of families have charter. My family uses a public school charter, and we homeschool through a charter. Um, by God's grace, that charter, our educational specialist, goes to our church. We get to fellowship with her and talk with her often, and so we have a, a special accountability with that. It really is to each their own family. Whatever, whatever you decide to do, uh, you, have, uh, you, can do, you have the freedom to do that. Liberty Ed is a supplemental enrichment program, which means uh, it, when you bring your kids to Liberty Ed, they'll have an opportunity to learn uh, the spine, to learn the curriculum, but they go home and the rest is on you. So it's an opportunity for them to develop socialization. It's an opportunity for them to learn uh, Bible memory uh, verses. It's an opportunity to learn a biblical worldview from this curriculum. But all of the extra stuff that happens within the curriculum is up to you as a family. A lot of our families take the curriculum 
and they apply, they, they, they grab textbooks, they grab different books, they grab different read-alouds, um, they go through Answers in Genesis or other curriculum models, and they get, those, they get that curriculum to supplement what they're doing here at Liberty Ed. So for example, if, uh, if you're learning about the Middle Ages next year, you're going to be learning about Middle Ages for a few weeks in the curriculum. Well, at home, you might want to get a book like King Arthur, and you read through King Arthur as a family, and you have discussion questions as a family, and that King Arthur book supplements what's happening here at Liberty Ed. Liberty Ed serves as a jumping point for what you guys are doing at the house. All of our Liberty Ed tutors are tutors. They're helpers. They're designed, they're here to help you in your home. They are not the teachers. The teachers are you. You are the ones responsible for your home. You're responsible for your family. You govern your children. You govern their education. The tutors here at Liberty Ed are here to help you and to support you, but they are not, they are not, the, they are not the teacher. You are the teacher. So going on, Christ-centered, Liberty Ed is also a Christ-centered family fellowship created through on-campus classes, which you, you have here on Thursdays, activities. Um, Director Chelsea will be talking about uh, all of the different activities that um, that uh, happen here. Uh, I'm, I have seen photos, and they just look like you guys have so much fun. I wish I can. I wish I lived closer so I can be down here more often. Um, you're going to hear about park days, and you're going to hear about field trips. All of those things are part of the experience with Liberty Ed. It's, it's not just coming on Thursdays to the community day, community day, but it's building relationships with other families uh, and through experiences uh, that, that Chelsea will talk more about. And it's a co-op ministry expecting active parent participation. Sometimes there are, are co-op groups that the first question they ask is, is it, is it a drop-off? Liberty Ed is not a drop-off. Liberty Ed requires, Liberty Ed expects, Liberty Ed functions off of parents' participation. So we have, we'll go through, you'll hear about all of the different needs that exist with Liberty Ed here at Valor Academy, whether it's um, support for, with our tutors, maybe it's tutor aides, parents that come in and help the tutors get their, their space set up, uh, maybe it's bathroom monitors um, or chair setter-uppers or trash taker-outers um, or coffee makers, whatever it may be, we rely on parents to participate in the educational process. Oftentimes, we'll even encourage families, parents to sit in and observe from the background what's happening in the classrooms so you can learn tools and strategies on how to better homeschool your kids because our tutors uh, have experience with that. So we would invite you, encourage you to be a part of the process. So I'd like to invite up Chelsea. Uh, to go over what's actually happening practically on a day-to-day -day basis uh, here at Valor Academy. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Chelsea Kelly. I helped lead the community this year. Um, I'm so glad that Dr. Andrade ended with that because um, in, we are a little bit different um, at this community than they are in Chino Hills. Um, Everything is just unique when you're in a different space. And um, in our case, you are all sitting in four classrooms. So every week, we divide this room up into four different blocks and corners, and we do our classroom um, all together right here. We do some... Um, we do some work in the middle too, where we're all together, but it's so important to have those parents and to really be linking arms and working together. So um, I'll go through what we do every week. Okay. All right, so for the next school year, um, for 2024 and 2025, we will have 24 weekly classes. So we meet on Thursdays. We meet every Thursday. We meet from 9 to about noon. Um, and that's, that's current. But next year, we could potentially um, be meeting from 9 to noon and then doing um, a lunch period and then having electives. So we currently don't do electives just because of the space we're in. I'm sure that you saw in the video there was some baking going on and things like that. It just... We just don't have the space for that this year. But we do our best to try to fellowship as much as possible and stay together as a group as much as possible um, as well. But we are hoping for those electives. So that's what you'll see in this schedule. So we start around August. 
This year we went through um, December. It's a potential, the, the schedule is not set um, like in stone for next year, but it could be anything from August to November. We might even dip into December, to, just depending on how dates fall and how holidays fall. Um, we'll take a break around Christmas time, and then uh, we'll finish up our second semester from January to April. Um, and then we are currently offering pre-K through eighth grade for the next school year, which is exciting because this year we only offered um, through sixth grade. You can go to the next one. Okay, so the way that we start off our day is, um, or our Thursday, I should say, our community day, is with family service. So family service is for everyone. We all start off together, and we have um, a message from one of our pastors, or, hi, Janelle, how are you? I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, we have a message from one of our pastors or one of our uh, trusted leaders, and they come and they lead us in a message. Now, this message is carefully planned out. It's carefully planned out in advance um, by, by Liberty Ed Chino Hills. Um, is that? No. Liberty Ed Calvary Chapel, Chapel Chino Hills. It's just a mouthful. So anyway. Our friends up in Chino Hills, they uh, they carefully plan those for us, and then uh, the 412 uh, pastors and leaders, they give the message. But what we do is we just encourage all of our families to come to that and to bring their Bibles, take notes, because that's a really important part of our service. Um, during that time, we'll also do announcements, we'll do worship, um, and I think that covers family service. Sorry, guys. Okay. And then from family service, we're going to move into our core classes. So for grammar stage, those core classes um, are made up of our pre-K and kindergarten. That's one class. First and second grade, third and fourth grade. And then our logic stage is fifth and sixth. And then we have seventh and eighth. So each of those classes will have between eight and 12 students in them. Um, this depends on enrollment, this depends on um, our tutor and how, uh, how comfortable they feel with the amount of students that we have. So there's a lot of factors that go into that, but um, you can bet that the classes will be between uh, eight and 12 students. Okay, go to the next one. Okay, so when we move into our class, the very first thing that we do is we talk about uh, family service. So we have a family service follow-up. So after we all break out into our classrooms, um, the, the tutors will have already listened to the message with everybody, with their families as well. They'll be taking notes and they'll be making sure that they're coming up with really good questions, um, thought-provoking questions, um, maybe additional scriptures that they feel that um, that would go along with maybe something that they talked about last week and then connecting it with this week because the pastor or the leader is not going to know those things. So that's the tutor's job to, to help be making those connections and to um, just helping us go deeper with Jesus with the kids. And then the kids are going to be listening for little nuggets of information. So we want them um, bringing back to the classroom something that that um, sparked their interest or pulled at their heartstrings or maybe a scripture that they recall from last week and how it's connected to this week um, or asking questions, what are we doing next week? I actually um, have the pre-K K class right now also and they always want to know about next week and it's so exciting because then we can talk about all the connections for next week and then talk about last week too. And so anyway, um, family service just being able to hear that message and then take it back to your classroom, then learn how to talk about it, talk about it in a group, is um, it's been really awesome. Awesome for my family, awesome as a tutor. I know it's been a blessing to other families as well because really what it does is it teaches them then how to take these conversations um, and these messages and go back to their home and talk about it at your dinner table. And then from your dinner table, maybe take it to the park or maybe talk about it with your friends. Um, so it really just encourages kids to ask questions and to be more comfortable with um, talking about Jesus with other people who they might not see in their own four walls every day. Um, that's fine. 
I'll go, no, it's, no, no, that's fine, because I can talk about presentations later. Thank you. So, um, so for the grammar stage, your daily schedule is going to be um, a follow-up from family service, which we just went over. Um, we will do an activity from the spine, and then we will do memory work. And the memory work um, this year often um, is geography, um, a Bible verse, math facts, a language phrase or word, and we go over Latin, Hebrew, and Greek, and um, some type of poetry. It can be some type of poetry or a hymn, but something that the kids are memorizing, especially for the grammar stage, like Dr. Andrade was talking about. Um, we just really want the kids memorizing and using, getting used to that so that maybe down the road, if they hear a poem or a hymn again, um, they can then connect like, oh, it's this type of a poem or it's this type of a hymn. And they're making those connections, even though they feel like at first they're just they're just memorizing something. They just know a song or they just know a, know a fun um, little poem that they can tell people. But on down the road, it will serve them well. I've seen that in my own son. Um, and then... We also will read the spine together. So every week you will get a packet. That packet is going to have all of the information for that week that we're going over. So um, one week it will be Bible. Um, I'll do it this week, or not this week, this year. This year we did ancient history. So we had a week of um, uh, the Assyrian Empire. Then we had a week of the Babylonian Empire. Then we had a week of Persia. Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. We had lots of different weeks of all these like ancient, um, ancient empires that we were learning about. So what we would do is we would take that spine on Mesopotamia and we would read the fact. Then you can kind of dissect it or you can have conversations. Now this, these, um, everybody gets the same packet the same exact one from pre-K all the way up to eighth grade. And then it is just taught in a different way. So the first, um, not the first class, but the pre-K K class that I am teaching, I'll go ahead and read that. We'll pick out some words that maybe they don't know or understand. We'll look at it on a map. And then we'll talk about what maybe life may have been like or where have we heard that in the Bible. Um, but a different class, an older class, maybe your, your top level or top grade level class, um, they are going to do things much different. They're going to do um, definitions, maybe some writing. They might read to each other. Um, they might pull out a different type of a textbook and go over what it says in that textbook. And then they might decide that there's some fallacies in there, and so they need to go over that and maybe um, uh, put that with the book of truth, with God's word, and see um, why is this not true? Why should, we, why should we maybe be having more questions about this? So there's just different... Even though we're using the same material, there's different ways that um, each tutor is going to approach the material based on their age level. Um, and then presentations. So every class, every student will give a presentation every single week. Um, this is my favorite part, not only because I love hearing what the kids come up with every week and what questions they have for their friends, but also because I... I'm not comfortable with presentations, and I don't love them, and I never have, and, but I also never had to do them when I was younger, and so I hope for my kids, I have a, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old, I hope for them that because they've been doing presentations now every single week, um, they will continue to be getting more and more comfortable, and they have a lot more years to become more comfortable than I ever did, so that's why I love the presentations, and I think that they're just, they're so useful. Um, you can go to the next one, Kimmy. So we already kind of touched on a lot of these things, but so for the logic stage, which is going to be fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth, um, we'll have this basically the same flow. It will just be age appropriate. So we'll follow up with family service. We'll read the spine. Um, then we'll have, they'll have a discussion. They'll maybe do the same activity or maybe they'll do a similar activity that goes with the spine, but it just really goes deeper or, um, you know, their dexterity is different. If you're doing an art, um, this year we, we painted a lion and, um, we, the older classes, 
we have, um, we're blessed that one of our tutors is an artist. And so she took them through like step by step of doing this lion painting. And these lion paintings that these kids did were amazing. Now, I have a lot of confidence in my pre K K kid my pre-K K kids, um, but I just knew that they weren't gonna be able to do that art project. And so we came up with something different. And we all still had a, a lot of fun, but we were just doing different things at different um, age levels. So the logic stage also has memory work. Um, this year, our memory work pretty much stayed consistent across all of the, um, the grade levels, but that doesn't necessarily have to stay that way or have to be like that. So um, with the memory work, your older kids could be memorizing something uh, much more complex for math while your younger kids are memorizing something that um, is still very useful and you need to know, but is maybe not as complex. And then it's the same thing with presentations. They'll have a presentation every week as well. It may not be like the um, kindergartners, but it will be something maybe more along the lines of, um, so we learned about Mesopotamia a lot last week. So for next week, I want you to go ahead and present, or I want one student to present on maybe the, the clothing for Mesopotamia. I would like another um, child to come up with um, a, somebody out of the Bible who would link us back to Mesopotamia. Oh, then another one could be, um, was there war during that time and what were the weapons that they used and why would they use that? Where did they get the materials? So each child can present on a different topic that has to do with a um, with the, the topic, the, with Mesopotamia um, from the previous week. And, but it continues to just take the kids a little bit deeper into um, that subject matter for that week. Okay, you can go to the next one. Um, so fellowship lunch, that's from 12 to 1240. Um, this is actually at our friends giving, this picture is. Um, but we try to, we do try to have lunch together as much as we can. Actually our presentation time, at least for my class, has really become like a lunch time for us. Um, because the kids have a snack during that time. And then um, afterward, we go to the park. And so um, we try to, we have to have more snacks then because these kids have been locked up in a room for three hours. Um, but next year, we are, we're really hoping that we can all have a dedicated lunchtime to all do lunch together. Go to the next one. Um, this last year, we did a Christmas program. It was a lot of fun. Um, we had... We had a team of moms. That's why it's so important to have um, to have support and to have a lot of people working together. And um, if you know that you're strong in one area, please, please step forward because um, there are other people who are not as strong in putting together an entire Christmas program. The Christmas program was really fun. Each class had something that they got to do. We all did um, another portion together and um, the kids just, they did a great job, especially given the space and given the amount of time that we had to work on these things. Um, it was just, it was really fun. And then we were able to all fellowship afterward. We also do park days. So because we don't have a time that we can all have lunch together, we decided that we need to go to the park and just have fun and play and get out the wiggles and the moms can talk and we can either um, talk about whatever we want or uh, while the other kids are playing and then they're not coming and asking us a billion questions so we can just kind of decompress or um, we can get together and talk about curriculum or what we're doing for the next year. I think the park is really where a lot of those conversations happen where it's just the families are supporting one another. Um, it's been really awesome to be able to go to the park and talk about um, what what we're learning this week, what books you're reading. Oh my gosh, that sounds so amazing. I'm going to go to the library and I'm going to grab that book. Would you actually like to go to the library together? And then people are making like these little dates together. And really it's all about um, going deeper with Jesus and learning about him and um, carrying him throughout our week. And I really feel like the park days have helped so much with that. And so I hope we continue those next year. 
We also did some nature hikes this week, or this week, this year. Um, those were really fun. This is at the Vernal Pools in the Santa Rosa Plateau. Um, it was a very muddy day. We had lots of, <laughs> lots of spills into the mud, but it was really, really fun. <laughs> And again, this is a that was a mom-led um, little excursion. She planned it, put it out there, everybody gathered. We also did museums. So we went to the Creation Museum when we studied creation. That was our second week, I believe. And so we all just right away went down to the Creation Museum um, in San Diego. And that you should go if you haven't been. It was awesome. Um, and then the other picture is at the Penny and Pickle workshop. We had a super rainy day where we couldn't do a park day like we wanted to, and they were gracious enough to give us a time slot, and so we all um, just hopped over there and had a great time together. We also did the pumpkin patch, and you could see the this picture. These girls are looking at a frog. They were catching lots of frogs that day, and we, <laughs> we got to... Um, talk about frogs and what they do and where they go. And a lot of times, honestly, it's the kids teaching the parents. Like, I don't know anything about frogs. I know that they they go through a metamorphosis, right? Because I know this song. What is it, Jack Harmon? Um, but, but other than that, like, it was really the older kids who were teaching me about what's going on with the frog. And then everybody gathers around, and um, it's just really fun to be in community and to do these things together. Okay, so um, we also would like to do elective classes. So this is something that Liberty Ed in Chino Hills, they do, and we would love to also do that as well. This year, again, um, I think I mentioned, but we just couldn't offer them this year. It was just the space was a little bit tough, and um, finding people for the first year was a little bit tough. But um, this is where you all come in because if you have something that you feel like you can offer, please be a hand raiser and offer to teach an elective class. It does not have to be cooking and baking or jujitsu or law enforcement or world missions. It can be something that you know that you're good at. Um, just like one of our tutors um, is really good at art. She's amazing. She could potentially do an elective class where she did art um, or we, if you are good at cooking and baking, by all means, like let's figure something out. Let's figure out how we can do that. We can be creative if you have a passion for one of these electives or an elective of your choice. Um, we just need to know what those are so that we can get those set up. But we would love to be doing electives. Okay, and then for expectations at home. So um, as a homeschool parent, like Dr. Andrade was talking about, you are the teacher. You are the teacher. So um, what we do as tutors or what we do as a community and as the leaders in the community is we're trying to model what you can do with this curriculum. So this is what we got out of it when we read it and we decided that we wanted to teach it to the class. But now it's your turn to take that curriculum take it home and come up with your own ideas. You can do what we did all week and that's fine. Or you can find other little pieces of information or other little offshoots that, that spark your interest or you know sparks your child's interest and then go to the library and get books or go to the craft store and build um, the, the armor of God. Um, and call out, like name each of those pieces and then have your child physically put it on for the entire week. Um, and then maybe the next week, they'll still want to put it on, but maybe then the next week they'll be putting it on, but they'll be putting it on with scripture and with prayer instead of physically putting on these like shields and the belt of truth and the shoes of peace and everything. So um, that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to model something here so that you can turn around and you can be creative in your own homeschool and you can go deeper into these subjects. So how we, how you would do that at home would be regular practice of the memory work. So each week you're going to do some memory work. I went over them, but um, they're geography, Bible verse, um, a poetry or a hymn, math, a math fact. I think that that's about it. But um, you're going to go over those things and you're going to 
um, use repetition. You want to go over them every single day because the more you go over them, the more that you're going to ingrain them. They might be five years old and not really interested, but they're hearing it and you're counting by fives while you're flipping pancakes in the morning. And then by the time they're, you know, 10, those skip counting facts are going to be solidified. It's going to make um, division and I think that's too old, but anyway, division and um, multiplication and all of those things a lot easier for them down the road because they would have already been exposed to it. Um, and then just helping with presentations. So some presentations are simple, but the kids are going to want to do it in front of somebody so that they're comfortable for the following week, um, but to just help them be prepared. And then for the logic stage, um, the same, practicing the memory work, um, practicing presentations or helping them develop those presentations because they'll be a little bit more complex. And then if there's any assigned reading or any as, um, assigned assignments, I guess, that your specific tutor has for you, just making sure that you're partnering with them because it just makes the class run a lot smoother. You doing this one? Okay, and then I'll have Pastor Simon come back up. All right, well, thank you, Chelsea. Um, she, and Chelsea really has been an instrumental part of the program this year and as just a perfect example of a mom who wanted to be able to um, see this as an opportunity for her children and to be very involved and hands-on. And so we're very thankful for all her contributions this year. So and thank you for uh, going everything uh, that you did tonight. And um, now what we want to talk about is some other opportunities for the program and ways to be involved. Okay, so it's one thing to have your children enrolled, uh, and it's another thing um, for all the other parts that happen. So we've talked about tutors. We've talked about um, some of the administrative work that goes into it. We've talked about other needs for volunteers in this program to make this successful. And uh, even when it comes to electives, um, there is just a, a need for a lot of people to be pitching in and helping to have this program continue forward to be the best possible educational opportunity for your children. And so I um, just want to talk about what some of those needs are. And if you can be praying about whether some of these might fit you uh, or if you know somebody that could be a good uh, candidate for any of these roles. We want to open that up to anybody that can come in and be a part of the group, even if they don't have children enrolled in the program. Um, so we will go through a process of interviewing and getting to know people and making sure that we've got the right people to fill some of these different roles. But uh, we have a need for help with administrative tasks um, that uh, are helping to just oversee and run the program coordinate, organize, and provide leadership. And then we have the need for those that are actually doing the tutoring and helping to coordinate and even uh, lead the tutors. So uh, for those that um, have a good knack for being able to walk the children through the different lessons and provide that tutoring. Doesn't mean you have to have an educational background. Doesn't mean you need to be a teacher. Uh, you just need to know how to be able to communicate and be good with the kids and have an interest in the curriculum so that you can bring that forth and bring it to life as much as possible. Um, David back there has been one of our tutors and has done a great job with that. Here are all kinds of uh, great things about um, what he's brought to that role and he doesn't have any kind of experience or background in doing that, um, but with his own children enrolled, uh, he took it upon himself to want to offer that, and uh, I believe he's had a good time doing it, and um, it's something that uh, the kids and the families have really benefited from. So anyways, that's just an example of what it looks like for somebody to be a tutor and to be able to take on one of these groups um, of, of students and to be able to help them uh, advance. So we do need more help. There are some spots available for tutors. And if you could just uh, think of anybody in your own circle of influence that uh, could be a possibility for that, uh, let them know that we have a need. And then particularly for any of yourselves that could be interested in that, we would love to hear from you. Some of these um, particular volunteer roles are strict, uh, strictly on a volunteer basis. 
Um, some of them because they do take more amount of time and dedication and input and there is more of an expectation um, to be able to be there every week and just get certain things done. Um, there is a, a reasonable um, but small stipend um, that gets paid for some of these roles. And where that comes from is through the tuition fees and the registration fees that we have for enrolling um, the, your kids into the program. And so we can talk about those now too uh, on, on what those fees are. And these, these are the fees that we charged this year in our first year. And these are subject to change. We've got some things that we're still kind of working out to make sure that um, these fees are set appropriately to cover all the costs that are incurred through offering a program like this. Um, but this is what we've charged this year. So there's a one-time uh, $100 non-refundable registration fee per family. So if you've got three kids in the program, then that, that is the one-time fee that covers all of them. Uh, a $300 annual tuition for the first student and then each additional student is $285. And then we have a Little Eagles program, uh, which is for the two to four year olds, uh, which is, uh, would you say that's kind of like a child care program? Okay, so, you know, little brother, little sister are here, aren't old enough to be in uh, one of the age groups um, in one of the grades. Uh, there's still a place for them where they're taken care of and they get some um, teaching as well. And they just, you know, have a place for them to have a fun time and be well taken care of. So $75 for the first child, $50 for each additional child. And the electives, since we still don't have official electives, uh, we can't really say for sure, but um, this is the uh, model uh, from Chino Hills. And so they were charging $70 per elective class. And I would imagine we would be somewhere right around there too, should we have some electives. And, uh, and I believe that we will. And so this is where you come in on this is the more of you that uh, decide to want to become a part of the program and the more that you share this information with others, um, the larger the program is going to be. And that's, I mean, that's not the goal. We're not trying to have an extremely large program, but we do want to have as great of a network as possible of parents and other community members that can pitch in and be a part of this. And so uh, the more the word gets out, the more opportunity we'll have for different skills and talents and experience to come in and to be a part of it. And so it would be good to have just a good, healthy program uh, where we have each of the different age groups filled and we're able to offer electives for everybody. So um, right now, we're not at the point to where we're taking the registration applications, but we will be soon. And so what I would ask you to do, if you have an interest in whether you're volunteering or whether you're enrolling your kids, um, send us an email and we're going to be building an interest list. And then soon, over the next couple months, we'll be reaching back out to you and we'll be able to talk about the process of getting involved in the program and actually having your kids enrolled. We do have interviews for each family. Um, it's nothing crazy, it's nothing too lengthy, but we do like to know uh, who is going to be a part of the program. And because this is a Christ-based program, we want to make sure that we understand where you're coming from in your faith and what that looks like in your household. And so we know that if everybody is like-minded and is actually believers and are committed in their faith, uh, it's going to work for a better, more healthy program overall. So for that reason, we'd like to know uh, who it is that is going to be enrolling and uh, make sure that uh, everybody you know, is in agreement that it's the right fit for your family. So um, yeah, just send an email to info at libertyedvaloracademy.com um, if you're interested in any aspect of this. And then somebody will be reaching out to you soon just to talk about next steps and what to do going forward. Um, we are filming this meeting tonight. And so for those of you that uh, registered online, I've got your email address and we will send out a link to the recording. That way you can share it with other people that you think might be interested. And we'd really appreciate that. I think that would go a long way. Uh, it'll be on the YouTube channel for 412 Church, Temecula Valley. And uh, by the way, how many of you would consider 412 Church your home church? Okay, so a lot of you. Anybody that is coming from a different church? Okay, and so just curiously, how did you hear about tonight and about the program? Um, so I went to church over on Hillsboro Street. Oh, good. Okay. And then, uh, 
Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, so we'd love to hear that, and we want more of that, and we really do want this to be something that is available to the community. Uh, like I said, this is an extension or a ministry of 412 Church. Valor Academy is actually set up as its own organization. It has its own board of directors and is run independently in that way. Um, but it is something that was created from 412 Church, and uh, we do consider that a ministry of ours. However, like I said, it's, it's very open to the community, and we want everybody to feel welcome to be a part of it. There's no obligation to attend the church. Uh, or to get involved in any way beyond that. Um, but we just believe it's our responsibility and it's our privilege to be able to offer this as a ministry of the church. And so we would love for as many people um, to know about it as possible. So please share. We'll get the uh, link to the video out to you. And now after sitting here and, and hearing what Dr. Andrade had to say and what I've had to say and what Chelsea has had to say, some of you probably have some questions. Hopefully you have some questions. And uh, does anybody have questions? Okay, so we've got at least one, so that, for, uh, that warrants a Q&A session. So I'm going to ask Dr. Andrade and Chelsea to come up, and they'll be able to answer any questions you have. Is there like a sample package that we can see what you're currently providing to the community? That's a good idea. Do we have um, extra packets I here? Do. I do. After, after this, I can get you some. They're in my car, so I can give you one. That's going to depend on what class is being offered, typically. Mm -hmm. Do you have an age group at Chino Hills? Yeah, so we have, for at the Chino Hills campus, we have the age range articulate or shared. So if, if it's a littles class, like we have, we, have, um, we have one class called the Little Zions class. And Little Zions class is basically is a basic um, learning class where the kids are learning about planets and, and, um, and plants and animals. And it's really targeted for like the four to six year old. So we're not going to have 10 year olds in the class, so they're going to just be completely bored the whole time. So you, we just have to know ahead of time what age range that you would be, uh, that would work best for the class, and then we'd offer it the class like that. And then last question um, Can you be there all, every time? Can you come to their child? You said it's recommended, but can you? Is there going to be a problem with going to see it with my kids every time and doing everything? So the question was Is there, are you? Okay. In the classroom. Yeah, so um, can you come every day and sit with them in the classroom? But every community day? Yes. Yes. So um, as Dr. Andrade mentioned, it's not a drop-off program. So yes, you will come every uh, community day and you'll come with your child. In this particular community in the, at the Marietta campus, the 412 campus, um, the parents, because we're all in this room currently, Everybody is together, and so you will be sitting with your child. And um, I know that our tutors for this year, we like that because it makes it more hands-on with the parents, and they're able to help. So um, in some classes where you have the younger kids, it's nice to just have some parents saying, like, it's time to settle down, or let's go sit over here, or have you seen this thing, instead of running around the classroom or being distracted because the noise level is a little bit higher. Now, next year, um, we're hoping to have more secluded areas for each of the classrooms and then there will be more jobs for parents. So while you might be there with your student for a little while in their classroom, you might volunteer to staple packets for us for the next week and so you might be um, asked to go in a different area to do that, but we do want everybody on campus um, with the students every week for community day. Let me jump into that question too. That's a really good question. Uh, I, I think it goes to, in, to two directions for me. One, yes, you should always be here. Like that's, that's what we're excited about is this is a parent, an active parent involvement uh, ministry, um, organization, opportunity. So we, we would actually be discouraged if parents didn't show up. So we want to make sure that parents are actively involved. Number two, um, we also have a responsibility to teach our kids how to be independent so if, if your little one grows to be dependent on you being there, then that would be a, an opportunity for us to grow, right, for your kid to grow. So we would have that conversation. A tutor would have the conversation with you, the parent, letting you know something that they are observing, that they're seeing, and would encourage you to continue to, 
to raise up your kid to be ha to have that sort of independence? That's an awesome question. Yeah. Sure. Yes, so uh, my, I, have, I guess probably have a couple points to that. Uh, there's a great resource called HSLDA. HSLDA Homeschool, are you with HSLDA? Yes. So the question uh, was, uh, was uh, are, is, is her student liable uh, by the state or is there a responsibility that she has in order to um, in order for her student not to be marked as truant when attending uh, or if missing uh, for Liberty Ed? So it, it really does come down to what your student is in, uh, registered in. If you, if you consult with HSLDA, they can provide you specific, uh, very specific uh, laws and resources for what you need to have. Uh, it, depending on what system you go through, so my kids attend Liberty Ed in Chino Hills on Tuesdays, uh, and that is marked as their learning day. Their educational specialist um, gets information from them, what did you learn about at Liberty Ed on Tuesday, and they get to share information with them. So we as the teachers, as the homeschool teachers at home, mark them as, uh, as here, they, they're marked present for class time because they did learning for that day. Um, so they're not marked truant for that. Um, the other piece is, is that Liberty Ed is not liable for, for, um, for the, uh, for the, as a private school provider or as an affidavit. So as a parent, you are exclusively responsible for that if you're, going on the private, uh, if you're using the private school affidavit option. If you're going with the charter school option, then the charter is responsible for that. So you just make sure you get that worked out. Did I miss anything, Chelsea? So the question was, can we use uh, state funds through a charter in order to uh, provide or in order to, to use or to use toward Liberty Ed? Uh, and the answer, we do not use any school funds for Liberty Ed. Uh, if Liberty Ed goes on a field trip and you can coordinate with your educational specialist through your charter. Um, so, for example, some families have gone to the safari park. Our family went to the safari park two weeks ago and our family used school funds to pay for that safari park. Uh, for my, my kids and my wife. So you could use school funds and you can coordinate with your community what those, where, where you're wanting to go, but you, you won't be able to use state funds for anything Liberty Ed related. Yeah, it's probably gonna be different from the, for this area. In our area in Chino Hills, we go through Sky Mountain. Uh, a lot of families use Sky Mountain and Granite Mountain. Uh, is that down here? Yeah, so there's Mission Vista in this area. There's Mission Vista and Sage Oak. As Liberty Ed and 412 Church in Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills can't, can't endorse or won't endorse any sort of public school when it comes to getting your kids or families involved. But do the research, do the research on your own as far as what, what um, uh, charters provide, what sort of resources they provide for your family. If that's a good fit, some families choose to go that route. It works for a lot of families and other families don't. But I know that in this area you said Sage Oak and Mission Vista. Good question. <laughs> Keeping me on my toes. How well does the curriculum transfer based on their own school plan or even a public school? They can move out of the area and go to So, so the question is, uh, how well does the content transfer if your child moves out of this area or goes to another location? That's a great question. I, I think it's it would be the equivalent of, of uh, say, saying that learning transfers. Um, learning, learning follows you. There's no loss um, when it comes to a, a great learning. Uh, so this year we studied ancient history at this site, uh, and next year we're going to be going into the Middle Ages, then then the Renaissance, and then American history. And so those are 
a cumulative experience over four years, it's going to be great. Now, you may leave from this site uh, after you know, leaving Middle Ages and go to, uh, you might move up to Chino Hills. And at Chino Hills, we're just one year ahead because, uh, because um, uh, the Marietta campus started a year behind us. So you may leave Middle Ages and jump right over to uh, early American history. Uh, but, but truth is truth, and learning will follow you. So there isn't going to necessarily be a learning loss. Um, many studies have shown that students that, that leave homeschooling and go into another form of education, say it's private school or public school, if it's done right and it's done well, um, your, your children will be advanced um, because of that learning is, uh, is a best practice. The learning ratio from, from the public school is 1 to about 42. The learning ratio to private schools is 1 to about 25 to 30. Uh, uh, Liberty Ed, that's why Liberty Ed will always pursue having a class ratio of 8 to 12 students, so that learning ratio is much lower. But the homeschool family, the learning ratio is 1 to 2, 1 to 3, and if you have a dynamic family, you might be 1 to 6 at the most, or 1 to 7. So, um, so the, the ratio of teacher to student is, is much better, which gives you opportunities to answer your, your kids' questions and be able to provide answers to them. Thanks. Any other questions? Where the little where the little eagles is the question, yeah. so there they'll be somewhere here on campus. So right now um, we are utilizing uh, the space downstairs or the space near the um, elevator, which we block off. We block it off, everyone. Um, but and then they'll they'll um, get like little. Uh, daily field trips, community day field trips, and they can walk around here to just stretch their legs and get out of their little space and then go back. Um, but they'll be on campus somewhere. So um, when we move into the new building, there'll be the classrooms, and then um, there will be a designated space for those kids. Yeah. Tuition is on top of the hundred dollar registration. Yeah. So she asked if the tuition, if the um, family, the family registration fee goes toward tuition, and it does not. So um, there's a registration fee. That's that hundred dollars for per family, and then you have um, your tuition per student. So the question was, how does it work for books? Uh, do, are books considered part of the tuition or included in the tuition? The, t the tuition covers the curriculum. It provides us with the curriculum. And oftentimes, families use that curriculum as a jumping point for other literature. So you could look at uh, different organizations. You can get connected with other families. You could even email us um, that info at libertyedvaloracademy.com. And that can, we can redirect those questions to uh, to, tell, to Chelsea or one of the tutors here at, at uh, this campus. But you could also email libertyed at calvarycch.org. Um, and when you email libertyed at calvarycch.org, we can get you plugged into uh, different resources uh, like that material. So we can help supplement um, the curriculum with great reading and, uh, at home. So uh, no, we do, the, the, extra, the extra books would be on you to, as the teacher to, to research and to find uh, what, what, what best fits the curriculum. So, for example, if, if we're studying ancient history this year for Liberty Ed, it would not be ideal to uh, spend quality time as a family um, reading about the Civil War in the United States. It's, it's history, and it's truth, and it's good. It's not going to return void, but it would be best to read material that's rooted in ancient history. So you have the year consumed with ancient history, because when we get to the uh, American history, that would be the perfect time to read all about the Civil War. But I would recommend getting, a, getting a, um, affiliated with different homeschooling groups so you guys can learn what literature there may be, what books, are, what, what books would be recommended, because really being a part of a community helps direct those decisions. Because really, you're running blind, um, or you're running into an ocean. You're swimming in an ocean of curriculum and material. It's best to have a community around so that they can help direct you guys to the best stuff. Okay. Yeah, libertyed at calvarycch.org is a great resource.
you are the teacher and you'll be working with our tutors to determine those sort of things. So we have that on both campuses, I'm assuming, but definitely in Chino Hills is that we have students that, that might be at fifth grade age, but they're at fourth grade performance or academics, so they'll stay at fourth grade uh, uh, academics. Yeah, we'll work that out with the admin and the tutor. Any other questions? Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Chino Hills, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, and then 412 Church. So Chelsea mentioned it earlier. I just wanted to reiterate, uh, this is kind of a side note when it comes to presentations. Chelsea said that her favorite part of the day is presentations, and I would absolutely agree with it. Uh, after our first year, if you were to ask at the, at the beginning of the year, the students, what is, your, what is your least favorite part? The students would say the presentations. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of studying, and it's really, really scary. At the end of this year and the end of our first year at Liberty Ed up in Chino Hills, we asked the question, what's your favorite part? And every kid said their favorite part of Liberty Ed were the presentations. You have five-year-olds that are, that are digging down deep and they're, they're, they're consumed with curiosity when it comes to the material and they're able to run as fast as they'd like when it comes to presentations. They can go as shallow or as deep as that they would like. Uh, this year, for uh, the setting the Middle Ages, we had students um, building Viking ships out of toothpicks. We had students building castles um, out of popsicle sticks. We had students building and designing their own shields and their own swords. Um, and uh, we, it is just remarkable to see what kids will do when they're given the liberty and the freedom to do those things. So this is a, really a sweet opportunity for families, a sweet opportunity for kids to grow and to discover um, what is true, good, and beautiful, and what, what the Lord designed uh, for our benefit. It's just, it's an uh, awesome opportunity. Any final questions before we wrap up? Uh, there is no drop-off time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the question was, what is the ideal amount of time spent each day uh, doing the curriculum? And I'll say my answer, and I would invite Chelsea to, to jump in on this one too as, as the homeschooling mom. Uh, <laughs> the curriculum that you'll have on Liberty Ed Days will take about three hours to get through. Um, Chelsea went through the, the practical side of the day, what you can, what you can expect. Uh, it really is going to be up to the parent to decide how you want to use the curriculum to guide the learning at home. Um, typically, a homeschooling day will be anywhere from three to six hours of practical instruction time or practical hands-on learning opportunities. But really, the parent decides how you want to best use the curriculum and how it guides. Uh, you can have it, you can come to uh, community, community days on Thursdays and you you look at the curriculum at 9.30, and you stop looking at the curriculum at noon, and that's all the time you look at the curriculum the whole week. Or you can come to community days and look at the curriculum at 9.30 and stop looking at it at noon, and then use that as a jumping point for the whole next week's worth of curriculum. So it really is up to you. Chelsea, did you have any thoughts on that? Um, no, I think that you're you're spot on. So the way that I, I know that we do it in our home is my kids, um, they have a binder with clear plastic sleeves and on usually on Fridays, because our community is Thursday, so usually Friday mornings, they're putting their um, curriculum packets into these the protective sleeves. And then while I'm maybe cleaning up breakfast or doing laundry or something, um, I have them going through their packets. And then when I come back, I say, what do you remember about the week? Or what do you want to tell me about the previous weeks? And so there's maybe that one day is that that's all we're going to do. But then there'll be other days where in their actual um, like core curriculum and their books in their language arts book or in their math book, um, we'll come across these different concepts that we've actually covered in Liberty Ed. And then I'll remind them, hey, remember how we did that last week? Let's talk about that. And so it's really interwoven throughout the week. You can spend, we're going to do 30 minutes each day going over our Liberty Ed work. You can do it that way, or um, you can 
you know, kind of weave it a little bit more organically throughout your week if if that's how what you choose and if that's the way maybe that your curriculum um, can like you know morph into into a different learning experience for you. But I would say that it it really does just um, depend on how you do school and what you're working on at home as well with your kids. All right, Pastor Simon want to come on up. And if you guys have, uh, Pastor Simon mentioned that um, uh, Mr. David is in the back too as a, one of our tutors. Chelsea served as a tutor and as a director for this year. If you guys have any questions for them as tutors, feel free to ask them. Um, uh, if you have any questions for myself or Pastor Simon, we'll be around for a little bit to answer any questions you guys may have as well. All right, thank you guys. Um, yeah, and actually on that note, I wanted to volunteer some of other of you that are current uh, Valor Academy families <laughs> to be able to answer some questions too, if you're willing. Um, so can I get a, some hands of who currently has kids enrolled in Liberty at Valor Academy? Okay, so we've got a few families here, and for those of you that are um, new to this and have some questions, maybe while you have a little time uh, before you get in your car and go home, uh, if you guys would be willing to stick around for a few minutes, uh, maybe you can answer some questions just about what your experience has been like. Uh, that would definitely be very, very helpful. And uh, like Dr. Andrade said, um, you can come and talk to myself or he or David or Chelsea. And I also just wanted to touch a little bit again on the cost aspect of things, um, just in case I didn't go into enough detail. I did say that those are subject to change, and they are going to change, um, and I don't know exactly to what degree yet, but you know, expect maybe 10 to 15 percent higher than what is shown on what we did this year. And uh, as soon as we have that information, we'll let you know what that is. Uh, but we learned this year how to really make sure that we are charging just the right amount because this is this is not a, a profitable operation. Um, this is not a money-making type of uh, thing that we're doing. Really, this is all going back into the program. So every dollar that is charged is going towards something um, for the program itself. So as I mentioned that there are some stipends that go to some of the admin roles and the tutor roles. Um, but printing of all the curriculum every week for all the families, um, there's a big cost there. Uh, there's insurance. We have to have liability insurance for, um, for every family that is a part of it as well. Uh, not to mention just other supplies, um, uh, accountant for handling the books. And so there's just lots of things that go into running the program that it all takes money. Uh, but if you think about it, even if you're spending, if you've got a couple children and uh, you register them for the first year, you pay your $100 registration fee or, you know, if it's going to be 125 or uh, maybe that'll stay at 100 I don't know. But let's just say, for example, you spend $750, $800 on a year's worth of this curriculum and this program. That's still a pretty good deal when you think about what that means for this investment into the education of your family. Um, so, you know, we're, we're doing everything that we can to control the cost as much as possible and keep them very reasonable and low. And yet at the same time, we found as costs go up in the world, uh, that they're going up for all of us. And so we need to adjust that accordingly. So whatever that amount is going to be, just know that the amounts are based on the, the needs, making sure that we're just covering those needs and uh, can continue moving forward in a healthy way. So anyways, more will come about that soon. Um, there's some refreshments, some, some fruit downstairs and some drinks and other snacks. So um, stick around if you would like to and help yourself to some of that or take it with you on the road. And uh, we hope to hear more from you guys soon. So have a good night and uh, thanks for being here, everybody.